We're headed down to Hollis to chase tornado and maybe derecho potential here in Oklahoma. And I've got Matt Sanis, the original, the legend, the driver of the Geo Tracker, May 3rd, 1999. Do I believe that's you? I know. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at this. Hey. Look at the bright green winter wheat fields. A sign of spring, but it is definitely early to be chasing in Oklahoma. Normally more of an April, May type of a storm season out here. Definitely a sign of things to come. Point to the target, please, sir. Wow, you point to that one in the southwest corner there. What is that, about seven o'clock? It's your Z, baby. That just looks nasty right there, doesn't it? Yep. Threat of a strong tornado with that renegade bean of a supercell. We got a lot of clouds, but then behind this cloud deck, it begins to clear out in the Texas Panhandle. Big time surface heating happening, and we expect an eruption of supercell storms along the dry line in the Texas Panhandle by about 4 p.m. You do that again with your mouth. And the sun is now shining out here in far southwestern Oklahoma near the Texas Panhandle. You can start to see these low clouds are burning off. That's key to developing the surface base instability that will require these storms to tap into that low level shear and also to produce tornadoes. And we have strong southeasterly winds transporting moisture northward through Texas. And then it looks like those supercells are to congeal into a fast moving squall line moving at about 70 miles an hour. So it's going to be very difficult to keep up with these storms as we're storm chasing through the afternoon and the overnight, but we're going to do our best. Just look at those southerly winds ripping here across Hollis. That is driving the moisture return. I don't know if we'll be able to see the actual mezzo. It's got that, it's got that look. That's it's it right here. Really? Yeah. See the little northerly inflow band? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Got a continuous roar tornado warning southwest of Mobiti. We're all over it. Team Dominator and the Ridge Riders here. Continuous lightning, roar. continuous roar above. Continuous lightning and roar. Classic donut hole right there on radar. Oh, textbook. <laughs> yeah, read, 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 read. We gotta go. We're getting it. Big lightning increase once again. We're just listening to that constant lightning. This says it's gonna dab, it's gonna do it right over us. Damn, it is getting low. There it comes. There's the updraft face. Watching a lowering right there for a wall cloud to form. That's the rain core. Big large base. Clear air off to the south. There's our location. Tornado warn storm is approaching us. Holy nuts. Yeah. I think it's just to the right, isn't it? Yeah. Holy Are nuts. We go westerly. We just see this wind, this road to turn. That's got to be blowing into it. Here we go. Oh, yeah, we got big wind. It's coming down. Get ready to shoot it. Keep that down. You have left, Julie. Keep your window down. Navigate. Okay. Right there. We just got 
This is some of the worst damage that I've seen so far over Southeast Norman, right along Alameda Mita and 48th Street, and classic with a fast moving tornado. And this was a QLCS tornado, an embedded supercell within the squall line is that the most significant damage is on the southeast side of the tornado that's moving off to the northeast. And that's because you add the forward speed to the wind of the vortex. And this home here had a roof that was completely lifted off. So this woman here sheltered in the downwind corner of the house, and that's the only part of the house that retained its roof. She survived unscathed, but a very fast moving tornado, scary situation. But this is evidence that you need to get in the downwind northeast corner of the house. If you ha don't have a shelter or below ground area to seek shelter, the downwind side of the house gives you the best shot. An interior room of clo or closet and also a bathtub can give you some extra protection inside of the home.